ascertain it's Molly, it's Hanley at Chicago Sports Radio 6-7 to the score. And Zach Zaidman, kind enough to sit in for Brian, who is having his last day of vacation. He'll be back tomorrow. And we are delighted to welcome in Rocky Words. He's here in studio with us, the owner of the Blackhawks. Hey, Rocky, how are you, buddy? Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Well, we, we, uh, I, I got to tell you, I don't know what it feels like to you, and I don't know that it's that exclusive a club, but you are miles away the most popular owner in Chicago right now. Uh, you got to feel great about that. People, I mean, you hear the crowd chanting your name. I, I, you know, you haven't had a misstep. It's been fantastic to watch what's happened. Well, thank you. And, you know, it's funny when the crowd chants that. You know, it's just really embarrassing, and I'm sure if you look at it, probably 14 <laughs> shades of red, because it's something that I, you know, just as soon uh, just stay away and just, you know, I want the team. They're they're the stars on the ice, and they're the important things. Well, it's been it's been magnificent. It's been a great great year, and certainly disappointing the first game, but I think we all still have very high hopes with this team. Well, the nice thing about this team is they learn every game out. They learn. And this is another learning experience, and it sounds trite, but Joe Quinville and his coaching staff, he's going to be working them there. And, and, and you can use, use a game like that on a positive basis to really come out strong. So tomorrow night at 6.30, uh, we're going to have a, I think you, you get in front of your TV set, and you're going to have a good time. Molly and I have been talking about the buzzword this year with the Blackhawks, at least in the postseason, has been resiliency. Because they bounce back from every kind of adverse hockey situation you can have so far. Remember game three against Vancouver, people thought, uh-oh, here we go, and, and they bounce back from that, and I think I'm expecting the same thing in game two when the Hawks take on the Wings, and we're with the Jay Cutler of owners, I guess. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to describe it. Uh, Rocky works. Did you, when you took over, it, did this match the blueprint of what you wanted to see from your team? Well, I wish I had that blueprint that, I mean, we were going pretty fast. Uh, the first thing is we wanted to make sure that uh, we were relevant back in a very crowded sports uh, you know, area. And that was the thing. And then we wanted to bring good people in. And that was bringing some, you know, a president in, that was John McDonough. And then the important thing for me to do is stay out of his way. Because the last thing you're going to do is micromanage. Because I said, John, if I start micromanaging you, then you don't need you. And then that's never going to happen. And I'm not going to go down the locker room. I'm not gonna, we're going to have boundaries. And we're going to really do this thing the right way. We're going to have good people. We're going to give them uh, plenty of uh, uh, authority. Stay out of their way and let them manage. And then let the players play, the coaches coach. And, and, you know, and then build a really good front office. And that John had, has done. And then he brought in Jay Blunk also, who is just a superb businessman. Oh yeah, absolutely. Those guys, the, the brain trust is fantastic. The coaching staff, uh, obviously having uh, uh, some a Hall of Famer involved in, 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 in the decision-making process, and Scotty Bowman, and of course his son uh, Stan. You know, Dale Talon has done a remarkable job. I don't think anyone's going to argue with any of it. I'm just curious, from, from your standpoint, and again, Rocky Words, the, the owner of the Blackhawks, joining us. We talked to Don Cherry last week, and he said he, he feels uncomfortable sometimes, that it must be awkward for you to, to have everybody praising you so much, because in a way, it's saying that your dad uh, kind of was antiquated in some of his policies. Has that been awkward for you, having to deal with, I mean, you've modernized everything, and things have taken this giant leap. Is it uncomfortable sometimes when you get that much attention? No, I mean, Dad and I were very close in business. We're, I mean, I loved him dearly. But, you know, we just did, did things a little differently. But the end result was he wanted to win. He cared very much about the league, and he spent a lot of time in league matters. And just what, you know, that year that we had the, the lockout is, you know, gave us an ability, you know, now to have a hard cap. And it's important because, you know, as, this, as the Blackhawks go on, we all, every team has to work in this hard cap. And now is it's the fruits of his labor of doing that. And so... Uh, I appreciate everything he's done, and then the, and and you know he worked more on the league issues than he did on his own team. So he looked at the big picture, and, and unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people realize that. And but the the nice thing is, you know, he's looking down, saying, and my grandfather looking down too. I mean, they they you know there was that you know. Uh, you know, that policy of not putting home games on television. Right. My grandfather didn't have the first period at home games on radio. Wow. Because he thought the same thing, that if, if the fans can get something for free, why do they want to show up? So there's nothing wrong with that. The important thing is that you adapt with the times, and it's not a slap in his face, it's just a progression of where he came from. He's Rocky Wirtz, the owner of the Blackhawks. I, yeah, I mean, it's 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 very strange because I think that that was what Don Cherry's point was, that your dad, that there were good Hawk teams. It's just the last few years have really been tough. I mean, I guess it was seven years. But there were some tough times there. But there were teams that, that, that did pretty well. We talked to John McDonough about a turning point. You, you guys have 
offered the olive branch to everybody. Bobby Hall is back. Uh, you know, I remember Bobby Hall as a, as a childhood hero, and I remember being, people don't realize how that really had an impact on this town. That was very depressing when he went to Winnipeg. That was a tough one to, to handle. But there have been great stars on this team that have come and gone, and now everybody's back in the fold. You know, we've talked to Tony Esposito and Stan Makita's around. It's great to see these figures from your childhood that are now back with the team that, for whatever reason, were, were not connected. And that's, that's one of the great things that's happened here. Well, the important thing is we didn't carry grudges, and it if I don't carry a grudge, then no one else in the organization is allowed to carry a grudge either. And when you carry grudges, that means you're looking back. And that is not allowed. We look forward, to just like yesterday's game. Tomorrow's a new day. The sun comes up. If you start dwelling on the past, you have a pretty negative outlook. And then everyone's angry. And, if, and anger feeds off of anger. And that's just not the way we're going to run our organization. Was it difficult for you? Because clearly you had all these ideas that you just talked about, these fresh ideas to, to move forward. And yet, you, you kind of had to stay in the background until you were the guy who, who took over the hockey team. How difficult was it during that period of time where you, you wanted to probably implement the kinds of things that you've started to implement, but you couldn't back in the day? Well, I, I knew eventually um, there would be that, that time, but uh, it, it, you know we had plenty of other businesses, and so I was running those other businesses, and you know we were bringing those uh, businesses along too. So the important thing is not to worry about what you have to do you know eventually you just sort of had to sit back wait your time and realize that there was boundaries dad was the boss he had the bat and ball i respected him dearly and loved him and i realized that, that was his area and i was going to tread on his on his territory rocky i'm curious because most successful people look at other successful people and they try to take things from them who did you look at well, uh, quite frankly, you know, we were going at 110 miles an hour. I didn't have time to look at anybody. I just realized we had to move this thing along. And I wish I was that smart that I could say I take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that. It's just that the way we run our businesses, I just took that over from our, our wine spirits and, and, and beer business and just took those same uh, business principles and applied them to our sports side.